Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you for your presence in our midst. The Bible says you inhabit the praises of your people. Thank you, Lord, for dwelling among us even today. Father, we pray that as our praises rise to you, may your blessings come upon us in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go through this Sunday school, Father, we plead with you that you also come abide with us. And Lord, you will teach us from your own bosom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. Praise the Lord. It's time for Sunday school. Um, we are having our second quarterly review today. And so by the special grace of God, we are having one class. And um, it's going to be more of a discussion session. Um, usually we review some of the lessons of the past. Uh, so, but today we are going to be reviewing just briefly um, the last topic we did, just a very brief review, um, which is mental health. And um, we know a number of us might have questions, a number of us might have some clarification, some things you need clarifications for. So just as we quickly do the review, um, you can just take note of whatever questions you have, and then we are going to be discussing them together. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, um, mental health was lesson 25. Like I said, the review is going to be very brief um, so that we can have some time to discuss. And um, we took our memory verse that day from Isaiah chapter 1, verse 6, which says that from the sole of thy foot, even unto thy head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They may have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. That's Isaiah chapter 1, verse 6. Our Bible passage that day was 1 Kings 19, verse 1 to 4. Do we have somebody there who can quickly read for us? The book of 1 Kings chapter 19, and from verse 1 to 4. Himself went a day's journey in the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life. For I am no better than my father's. Praise the Lord. Um, we see a very strong man in the Bible um, Elijah, somebody who called down fire from heaven, not once, not twice. But remember when he called on fire to consume those soldiers that went to arrest him. And as strong as we assume Elijah is, with the strength and the anointing, he came to a point where he was depressed. And he was saying, God, can, can we just end it here? And quite a number of us sometimes come to that point. Sometimes you just feel like, God, just end this word, make everybody start afresh. There are times like that. And sometimes we look at people from afar and we say, Kai, this brother is strong. Kai, this sister is strong. You know, you, and we assume. I remember when my father died, when they told me, young man, your father is dead, I was actually on my way to go and preach. And when I got the news, I just said, ah, father, will thank you. Thank you for everything. But I'm not stopping this journey. I went ahead, preached that day, and people were hailing me. When they learned that my father died, that day, they were hailing me. Ah, this preacher is very strong. Ah, despite his father's death. And everything, he didn't even cry. I didn't know I was wounding myself. I entered serious depression after then. You know, so sometimes you look at the outward appearance, you're like, this person is strong. Just like looking at Elijah, I say he's strong. And we saw, we saw that he was depressed at some point. 
The Bible did not speak explicitly on the topic of mental health. However, it does have a lot to say about the heart, mind, the condition of the soul. Health is defined by a World Health Organization as a complete physical, mental, social well-being. In fact, the latest definition even adds spiritual well-being to it, and not just the absence of disease or infirmity. Mental health is important as it affects the whole being. This lesson addresses mental issues and the possible solution. So mental health is a wide range, is a very wide topic, very, very wide. In fact, you can't even exhaust it in 10 lessons because there are about 28 mental health conditions. And each of those 28 have their, um, um, what is it called again? There are sub-topics um, um, under them. And mental health could range from simple things like my depression to schizophrenia. You know, and sometimes unless people talk, unless or when you see it manifest, you might not know that mental health is real and is even in our midst. We look at we that day we looked at what is mental health and we say that WHO defines it as the state of well being in which every individual carry out four roles, four important roles, which is to raise his or her potentials, cope with normal stress, work productively and participate meaningfully in the community. Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. If you have any problem with any of this, whether your psychological well-being, your emotional well-being, some of us will be having very serious insomnia. That's poor sleep. You see somebody during the day, you say, ah, are you well at? I say, I'm okay. But the person is struggling because the person couldn't sleep at night. Protracted Insomnia is a mental health condition. You know, we should take note of that. It could go to different things. Phobias. There are people that have different phobias. People cannot stand before a crowd and talk. People cannot go to some place that is crowded. We call that agoraphobia. Because once you are in the midst of people, there is this shaking, there is this tension that comes with it. All these fall under mental health. And it ranges all the way up. Even eating disorders. There's what we call anorexia nervosa among ladies that they just want to maintain a particular shape. Because of that, they don't want to eat. They starve themselves. You don't eat this, don't eat that. I eat once a day because they're trying to maintain a particular weight. And gradually, they fall into a mental condition. Praise the Lord. So it is a wide range of things. And it will go as far as what we call schizophrenia whereby one is already losing control of his or her faculties. You, the thinking, the imagination, the will, and everything. You know, in our psychiatric ward in those days, I just went and I was actually going somewhere, and one patient confronted me in front of the ward, and he was trying to explain to me, he noticed I was, I'm a doctor, and was like, trying to tell me his condition, they kept me here, you know, is a false accusation, I studied this, I studied that, I am normal. I'm, and I, I understood with him. He was, he was making serious sense. He was speaking very good English. He was well coordinated. And I wanted to make a case for him. So I went to the, to the doctor in charge of his case. And I said, this young man, he doesn't look unwell to me. And he's well dressed, he's neat. And the doctor said, um, do me a favor, please. What's his name again? Help me ask his name. So I went and said, sir, what's that your name again? He said, His Excellency, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay, just, just go back to the word. Go back to the word. We are going to handle your case later. <laughs> so <laughs> that is what we call delusion of identity. He is well, he is, everything is okay. But his identity is a problem. As far as he's concerned, he is the Holy Spirit. He even put his excellency on top. You know, so all that. And then we are looking at, um, it, like I said, it will be difficult to handle this post-traumatic stress disorder. There are some people that have very serious traumatic events at one point in their life. And all through, the, all through their life, that is chasing them. They have flashbacks. They have all kinds of things that's making them, it, each time they remember it. I have a lady then who hated everything man because she was raped by her cousins for years. 
And the mother will leave her with her cousins and go to work. Of course, she believed they are, they, are, they are cousins. And when the mother go, they will rape her, rape her over and over and over and over again. And by the time I met her, she was already a wreck. Thank God she's married today. But it was very, very difficult. So, all these things, like I said, it would be difficult to handle all of them. But alcoholism, illicit drugs, some pe- in drug overdose, drug addiction. Drug addiction doesn't always mean, mean cocaine. Some of us have become addicted to painkillers, tramadol, in fact, and all that. Pentazosin, if you have a child that's, that's a sickler, majority of them are addicted to painkillers because they are always in pain. Always in pain. I have a doctor then who, who herself was a sickler. So because she's a doctor and a consultant, she smuggles pentazosin and injects herself on her laps because she couldn't bear the pain. She became addicted to it. So examples can go on and on, but I will stop here, like I said, so that we don't take so much of our time. But there are a lot of mental health issues out there. And sometimes people bottle up things. One of the ways you will help yourself is talk. Talk. You notice you are down. You notice something. Get somebody you can pour some of your burden on. Because keeping quiet doesn't make you strong. Bottling it doesn't make you strong. That's why they say women live longer than men. Men will try to show that they are, that they are men. And you, are, you think you are strong and all that. Let it out. Praise the Lord. So, and cultivating good mentality was the second outline for that day. How do we want to cultivate good mentality? There are a lot of things that we need to do to cultivate good, good mentality. First of all, you need to sleep well. You need to eat well. Some of us are so busy. You don't sleep at night. You don't rest well and all that. That is not the definition of strength. That is not the definition of being a strong person. Because you are up and doing doesn't define you to be strong. Get time to rest. Eat well. Deal with the issue of um, um, trauma, neglect. I talked about post-traumatic stress disorder. Child abuse. I've mentioned that already. Please, like I said, take note of your questions because we are going to be throwing the floor open in a minute. Um, and all that. Poverty. Poverty can make people have very bad mentality. Can make people go into depression. You, sometimes, for men especially, when it's that you can't provide for your family, you are not meeting up to expectation, and you start seeing yourself as a failure. Before you know, difficulty in sleeping, your blood pressure goes up, and all kinds of problems start um, showing off. Low self-esteem. Please live where you are tolerated. Go to where you are celebrated. Don't stay among people who makes you feel you are nothing. Don't stay among people who don't see your words. It can push you into depression. It can affect your mental health. If somebody is tolerating you, please leave, leave that person. There are people willing to celebrate you. Praise the Lord. Take note of all that. Heavy workload, stress. Sometimes, if me and my wife is talking, I say, can you, I say, see, I know people to pass myself. Here we are, don't do bridge, but leave them. We'll continue tomorrow. You don't know to pass yourself. Know what you can handle at a point. If the stress is too much, cut it down. If the workload is too much, cut it down. And then, um, most importantly, if you are on medication, there are some medications for mental health. Or you know somebody who is on medication, take those medications. I know a brother who, who have schizophrenia and all that, a very brilliant brother, a lawyer, powerful man of God, graduated with first class and was given automatic employment in UNN in those days. But he has this mental health problem. You know, and after he went for, I think, was it 30, 40 days prayer and fasting, he came up and said, God has healed me. And he was, and you know, people celebrated him. Some of us in the medical field wanted to say, have you gone for tests and all that, all, all those kind of things, but you know, his faith was, was captivating. And he was fine all along. And one day he went to, after, he, after for long, the thing did they affect him. The day he now went for introduction for his wife. He was in his in-law's house. They were finalizing the process. He just lost his mind. Started scattering things. Praise the Lord. And the father of the guest said, is this what you brought to the house? Praise the Lord. 
So we should also understand that failure and challenges are part of human life. That you fail doesn't mean you are a failure. You, if you fail, you can rise again. Don't make that push you down. Don't make that knock you out. Don't make that make you feel you can't make it in this life. No. Always be there. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. If nobody will encourage you, start with encouraging yourself. Other encouragement will come along the way. Investing in good family support. You know, one of the things we, we enjoy in Nigeria very, very well, or in Africa very well than in this place, is that family support in Africa is very strong, isn't it? It's very, very strong. Your neighbor can walk in and visit you. People can visit you every week. You can always see somebody to talk to. Your cousin may live in your house and all that. Having a good family support is very, very important. Deal with boredom. <laughs> so loneliness and isolation. Some of the things that make people die quick is loneliness. Isolation. You know, sometimes just getting somebody to talk to is enough. Sometimes you... All you want is just somebody's shoulder to cry on, you know. So I'm going to be stopping here. Um, um, I don't know. We, do I have any contributions, any questions? Anybody who feel, okay, there's a hand up there. Um, or there's another hand there, okay? Yes, I thank you very much for the um, brilliant pre presentation. Sorry, what's the borderline? Because um, you mentioned something which is very interesting about a young man you met, you know, at the hospital. Um, himself, he felt he's good. Let's assume he has not been diagnosed. And from one of the things you said, you encourage people to speak out. But not the person will know what they do and go speak out. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, can you help us with a borderline where you say, ah, no, I have, I have to, or is it, yeah, I need help. Or is it people that are by our side? that should help to take a step, or is there something like, um, how would I say this thing, um, you know, is there something like um, losing consciousness of who you have, you know, and then you reporting yourself. I just wanted to help us to clear those areas so that we know the borderline. All right, thank you so much. Can I take the next question so that we just take all the questions at the same time, okay? Or there's somebody at the back that's talking, Praise okay? the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for the teaching. Um, I want to comment on the example you gave before I ask my question uh, about the, um, the man that lost his senses during wedding. We should be able to balance spiritual because some of us are saying that ah, it should be superficial attack. Somebody that has been well and on that day of the wedding, they think triggered. So we should be able to balance between spiritual and um, physical or using medicine. Because what happened is that, to me, if God has healed you, there are some things that will trigger that illness that one must keep away from. So he should have known that at that time of the wedding, there was, of course, there would be so much stress. So stress is one of the things that can trigger it. So God has healed him. He has been fine. He has been keeping away from it. But enough for God that during the preparation for the wedding, stress can trigger it. So if God heals us, we should keep away from those things that can trigger the effect from coming back. We are praying and at the same time guiding against it so it will help us to. God bless you for that. You are very, very correct. I agree with you. Thank you, sir. Um, that's my, my question is that I've just been wondering, um, when I was in school, I think there was one of the courses where they were teaching about something about mental health. And it's like there are tools for measuring it. In fact, when the man taught us, it now made us to believe that everybody has mental health. That it now depends on the degree or the level. So I don't know whether there are tools because most of the things you mentioned, it's like one, or one way or the other, we are all guilty or we have it, but it depends on the level. So that before it will get to where we will not be able to handle. So is there a level or tools for, measure, or for diagnosing it before we get to the higher level of not be able to cope. Thank, thank you. you. So we'll just thank you. We'll just take the last question. I think Pastor in front wants to ask question. We'll just take the last question. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, this is extremely you know, enjoyable. I want to ask, is there any way I can identify somebody who is uh, going down the road? Physically, or are there are signs that one can just. All right, all right. Thank you so much. 
Um, all right, I'll just quickly take these questions. Um, talking about, let me start with the question uh, number one. How do one know that you need help at some point and all that? One thing we should know is that mental health conditions are progressive. Nobody wakes up one day and runs to the street naked. Are we together? Mental health problems are progressive. It normally starts small, from my depression. It, it, at that point, you still have your faculties. At that point, you still know that I need counseling. At that point, you still know that something is wrong. You, you find yourself that you are not sleeping or you are even oversleeping because something is bothering you. You are easily irritable before you know it. All, it starts from somewhere. And then you notice that your mood is always down. Low mood, which is also another. At that point, you know that I need help. By the time it comes to, by the time it comes to you not knowing that you need help, at that point we call it that we say that patient don't have insight, and that patient at that point has come to the point of admission, because the patient don't have insight. Patient don't even know it is now people around that will now be like this. This person said this thing, no, and it doesn't make sense to us. It is now people around that will be like, and sometimes even at that point, you see the person sleep in and sleep out. Because at that point, they'll tell you, ah, two hours ago, you said something that didn't make sense. You'll be saying, me? How? What did I say? At that point, when the person is sleeping in and sleeping out, you still know that you, there is still a chance for you to seek help before it goes into complete lack of insight. Do you understand me, sir? Thank you. So, And then tools for measuring mental health. There are so many tools. There are so many tools. It depends, but the tools depends on what we are suspecting is wrong with this person. If we are suspecting somebody has schizophrenia, there is a tool to mention it. If we are suspecting dementia, we call that one the mini mental state um, examination. There is a tool to, me to measure it. So it all depends on what. Now, the, the, the truth of the matter is that at one point or the other, know that we go through stress in life at one point or the other. And stress can bring out some form of mental torment in us. The average, if you go to Nigeria, for example, the average Lagosian is crazy until proven otherwise. <laughs> you call yourself, you are, you, you are born again. You've been in traffic for four hours. And one bus driver just jammed you. You wouldn't know when you would say, take! <laughs> After you've done it, you now say, Kai, God, forgive me. So it brings out something in us, but that doesn't mean that you are mentally unstable. Are we getting it? So uh, the, by default, some of us go through certain things in life. Praise the Lord. Identifying somebody with mental health problem, it is very, very easy. Something as simple as you wake up. In fact, seeing see your friend who you know is always excited and is looking moody. Are you okay? What's the problem? Did you get a good sleep at night? Is there anything bothering you? I know. So, you see somebody that is moody for one day. Uh, all of us, we, we, we become moody once in a while. But when the person is moody, one week, two weeks, it should ring a bell that there is a problem. Are you getting it? Or you see somebody who you are discussing with the person, you are discussing an interesting discussion. And the person now putting a line that makes no sense. Are you getting me? You are discussing something of how, how what, um, um, uh, maybe let's just take an example. How um, the church service today was very, very wonderful. And you say our church was very, very wonderful. No wonder the cat ate the fish. <laughs> it is obvious that this person is still sleeping in and out. We, sometimes, the, sometimes the talking off point may come several times. We call it flight of ideas. Different ideas just running through their mind. Or you see somebody who is oversleeping. Oversleeping is an illness of his own. Praise the Lord. We will have to stop here. Um, if you have more questions, we, I will be happy to take them after the service. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Can we just bow our heads in prayers? Just a minute. Tell God to help you. Some of us might even not have insight that we might be going through one mental challenge or the other.
tell God to help us, especially those of us in the body of Christ, that the Lord himself will be gracious unto us. Ask God for healing among brethren, his children who are already going through mental, one mental problem or the other. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Our Father, we worship you. We thank you. Lord, we pray that you will make haste to help us. You will show us mercy. Lord, none of us will have mental breakdown. None of us will have mental trauma. In the name of Jesus, whatever the burdens of our hearts, Lord, please help us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.